Sony, we really need to talk. You've made it clear that the PlayStation 4 Pro. You're a beefed up PlayStation 4. That really isn't that beefed up, actually. Wasn't built to compete with Xbox One Scorpio. But with gaming PCs. Well, you were doing it wrong. Or, from a certain point of view, you were doing it right by demonstrating to the world why a console could never compete against gaming PCs. Let me explain. Before your friend boys pull out the torches and pitchforks, a rather high-profile game from last generation is getting a remaster for your console. That would be the fifth game in the Elder Scrolls franchise, Skyrim. Previously, Skyrim Remastered was not going to have mods on the PlayStation 4 because you were unwilling to give up a little bit of your strict control over content. A lot of people mistakenly blame Bethesda for this. But, those of us who know you all understand that not allowing mods wasn't really a technical issue but a political one. Well, partially technical. In addition to playing games, you also market the PlayStation 4 as a media device. This is laughable, as your so-called media device supports a very limited number of audio and video formats. Which brings us to why we're having this conversation. You have reversed your decision thus allowing Skyrim Remastered in Fallout 4 to have mods. With a catch. No custom sounds, textures, or models. I am not certain if you actually comprehend what it is you have done. The level of incompetence this demonstrates is actually fairly shocking. By barring custom assets you have essentially crippled mod support for two major AAA games just before the start of the holiday shopping season. Many people who bought Fallout 4 for the PlayStation 4 did so on the promise that the game would be getting mod support. Just like its Xbox One and PC counterparts. Many people pre-ordered Skyrim Remastered for the same reason. Now. What you've done is worse than not allowing mods at all. You have blocked 90% of all mods for both games. At this point, you might as well not have mods at all. And yet, you say you are not competing with Xbox One, but with PC, you must be joking. And, I hope you are not foolish enough to believe PlayStation VR will be enough to make up for that shortfall. PlayStation VR is a great achievement for a game console, don't get me wrong. But, compared to the Oculus Rift and HTC Vive it is very limited. Your PlayStation 4 Pro has the specs of a mid-range gaming PC from three years ago. And, you are trying to compete with current VR-capable gaming PCs. With a VR experience with buggy head tracking, and two high-profile AAA games with crippled mod support. If you were banking on offering a better price, after buying the required PlayStation camera and PlayStation Move controllers, your VR offering is as expensive as your PC competitors. Is any of this finally making sense to you? If this is the best you can do to compete with PC gaming, you are much better off sticking to competing with Xbox One. You can stave off disaster. But, it means giving up what you do not seem to be willing to part with even a little. Your strict content control. If you believe better graphics is the only thing that makes PC gaming so popular, then you have already lost. What makes PC gaming such a force to reckon with is freedom. Not the illusion of freedom. But real freedom. The freedom to change the hardware. The freedom to replace the operating system. The freedom to buy games from more than one or two pre-approved sources. The freedom to use virtually any mod. The freedom to use any peripheral and not just one style of controller. If the PlayStation 4 cannot offer the same level of freedom then it can never compete with PCs. Way back when you launched the PlayStation 3, you let people install Linux on the console. Fears that homebrew games might compete with commercial games made you remove the feature. You cited piracy as the reason for removing it. Anyone with enough technical knowledge to install Linux on the PlayStation 3 immediately understood that was a lie. And, so with that same corporate mindset you intend to compete with PCs. Give it up. Go back to competing with Xbox One. You might maybe attract a few people from PC gaming, 
but you will never get the enthusiasts let alone mainstream PC gamers. Yes, consoles have the advantage of not having to worry about system requirements. But the trade-off is just too severe. Sony, I am not trying to be mean to you or your fans. I am trying to help you. Right now, you hold the lead in the console market. However, Microsoft's changes in corporate attitude and their willingness to allow cross-platform play and cross-compatibility between console and PC is turning heads. Yes, there are problems with their universal format. Gears of War on Windows 10 is a buggy mess, and frequently had sound stuttering problems and crashed on me twice. These are technical issues that they are working on ironing out. They are even going so far as to release non-universal format versions of some games on Steam as a compromise. And, their Xbox One Scorpio has much higher specs than your PlayStation 4 Pro. The lead you have, has been narrowing for the past few months. So, just as Microsoft starts catching up with you the news about Skyrim and Fallout 4 mods comes out. I hope you understand this doesn't help you any. The novelty of PlayStation VR will sell a lot of PlayStation 4 consoles this Christmas. But, against the PC, you won't make a dent. If this is as far as you are willing to go, stick to competing with other consoles. Anything else will only lead to your embarrassment. This will be my last open letter to you, Sony. I have done what I can to help you. What happens next is totally up to you. Thanks for watching.